Hey, Jeffrey Howells, Carpet Cleaning here. We are out in Vancouver, Washington. A little bit of cleaning to do. So we're going to be doing some eco-friendly carpet cleaning today because uh, our cleaning solutions are soap-free, 99.5% biodegradable, if not more. Um, it looks like we've got three, four, five areas in a hallway here today. Um, this obviously is the most soiled and worst of it. Um, it appears to be a very low knit um, polyester blend, a polyurethane blend of some sort. So it's oil loving and doesn't like water. So, so I mean, that's what our cleaning solutions do is it breaks that water tension and rinses uh, this plastic stuff out. So. Um, so that's one, two. This area is somewhat soiled, but not really. Got this hallway. And there is tons of debris in the carpeting. I did rub my hand across the, the pile and there's a whole bunch of debris that was coming up. So, uh, of course, we're going to do our super vacuum because that's what we're, we're known for. And here's bedroom number two. Nothing out of the ordinary. Just regular closets, no walk-in closet in the master here. Probably already came in here. So, okay, here we got a nice red spot. Goody, goody. These always look good on videos because they come out and they're like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Well, you're going to see how we do that. And then... Bedroom three down here. Oh, got a little tiny closet. Bedroom here and another red spot, lo and behold. So, um, again, these look awesome on video, you guys, and I'll show you how to take them out in less than a minute. Well, it might take a little bit more than that, but once you know the technique and the product to use, they're very simple to remove. But anyways... We're going to go through, we're going to give it a super vac, we're going to pre-treat with our vac away awesome products, and then we are going to hot water extract, and the carpets are going to turn out absolutely beautiful. This right here is the reason for why we keep these uh, water faucet keys on hand because you never know when you're around to this situation typically it's in apartment complexes but uh, in this case it's residential and if you see on there I also have tied on there zip tied a couple of uh, rubber gasket washers um, for for hoses because um, you never know when you're gonna spring a leak or when you're gonna lose the gasket out of your hose or what you might need it for and I'm telling you leaks as these dumb as they may sound they're a pain in the butt if you don't have the right equipment with you so make sure you cover all your bases when you're out and about okay so a properly set vacuum cleaner um, I use the Kirby because it is extremely powerful it's got like a 7 amp motor and uh, it's got great airflow and suction picks up tons of debris, it's got a good beater bar under there and the height adjustment allows us to set it at a proper height on the carpet. So basically what you do is you turn it on, you begin lowering this guy down notch by notch until you hear it audibly make contact with the carpet. Boom, one more and that's your sweet spot. You're going to be getting way more uh, debris out of the carpeting at that height than any other height possible and I know this from experience and I know it from talking to other carpet cleaners or other uh, tenants and homeowners that I uh, instructed them how to set their vacuum cleaner and they claim that they were able to pick up twice as much debris afterwards um, not only have I experienced but it's also the testimonies of other people that had absolutely no clue that if you uh, increase the air volume going through your vacuum that you're also increasing suction and airflow and everything else 
so you're actually able to pick up more debris. Sometimes it's a little counterintuitive because you think you want to drop that beater bar as close to the carpets to beat stuff out of it as possible. But uh, really, it's having to do a lot more with airflow and um, the beating action on the carpets. Um, I, I don't want to say it's secondary because it's really what causes a vacuum cleaner to be effective. But um, think about beating the carpets and bouncing that debris up and not having any suction to suck anything up because that's what happens when you lower it to too much and that you cut off that airflow so we're going to do an extremely good job and we are going to go over and get a whole bunch of debris out of this carpet all right for this red stain remover what we're going to do to treat the stains we uh we pre-treated it with uh Red One by Pro Choice is probably one of the best synthetic dye removers available. And then we are going to steam it out with this wallpaper stripper. Again, this is a 1988 product that they, Block and Decker doesn't make this Steamworks um, wallpaper stripper anymore. However, you can buy them on eBay for like 35 bucks. Or you can buy the newer Namco version that does the exact same thing. And I believe they're about 100 and between 150 and 165 bucks so do the math and kind of do what you want there um, I want this route because it's one of those things when you know you do that you can do when you know sort of a deal um, I saw it I was like oh sweet I'm gonna check this guy out so um, we're going to go ahead turn it on and all it's going to do is blast steam into the carpet. Technically, you can use a clothes iron to do the exact same thing. However, this is just pushing out steam. So, you know, as hot as steam is, it's not getting any hotter than that. So you don't have to worry about uh, uh, burning carpet fibers or anything like that that you run into with a uh, hot iron. Because a hot iron will melt carpeting if you're not careful. This will not melt carpeting. However, you can cause discoloration if you're using the wrong cleaning product on here. So um, there's a good chance that if I dump some ammonia on there and uh, started using this steamer that I would just color the carpets. However, the ammonia, there's, there's a chance that the ammonia would pull that stain out, no problem. But I would just have to babysit it and watch it and make sure that I'm not causing discoloration at the same time. Um, and there are, there are ways of correcting the issue if you do cause discoloration, but that goes out of scope of what we're doing. I'm just going to go ahead and set that on, continue vacuuming, and come back and show you the results. All right, this has been on there for a couple minutes. We'll go ahead and pull it off and see what we've got here. So what I'm going to do, shut our heat off, slide this guy over. A little, a little too hot for comfort, but you can see the stain's pretty much gone. So... Uh, we might treat it one more time. It looks like there's a little tiny bit left in there. You know, we put just a little bit more of our red one down there. Go over it just a little bit more. And there's some edges that this obviously didn't cover all the way. So we can put it just straight on the carpet. It should be fine because it's not absorbing it into the, the, the carpet at all, really. It's, it's the heat reaction that's causing this this solution to to uh, molecularly increase and speed up and go faster. Now, your customers are looking for a carpet cleaning that carpet cleaner that is both professional and very confident in what they're doing. And doing a display like this is a winner because uh, the customer's like, "Oh my gosh, how did you do that? This guy knows exactly what he's doing." And, um, yeah, you could call Stanley Steamer or another uh, franchise carpet cleaner, but you never know who's going to be actually coming to your door. Uh, one thing is sure is that some urine stain color van is going to pull up in your driveway. But other than that, you have no idea who it is. So, uh, anyways, it's one of the differences between franchise and owner-operated businesses. Hey, as you can see, red stain is 100% gone. Not a trace, no discoloration. Absolutely beautiful. So we went ahead and we pre-treated with our stain one over here, or our red one over here on this red stain. We went ahead and put the uh, carpet wallpaper steamer 
on there and it is currently pulling that out so as it's pulling that out we're gonna go pre-vacuum that that bedroom and then we'll come back and take a look at this all right let's move this off and see what we got lo and behold this is not a synthetic dye stain um, obviously I kind of did this on purpose because it's a square and that to me is an indicator that it's probably furniture transfer anyways but I went ahead and did that just so that we could come across this scenario so what I'm gonna do is I am going to get uh, some furniture stain remover and apply it on there and see if it has any better luck okay so that's where that nasty red square was it was right in here um, you can still see slightly a little hue so what we'll probably do is put a little bit of our uh, red one over there and see if that will get up any more coloring I, you don't even really see it except for in the camera I mean, naked eye you can't see anything but what we did is we broke it down with using our hell gel which is basically a citrus um, solvent gel but in a gel form so it actually uh, instead of being absorbed and dissipating because it's a volatile uh, substance and evaporating right into the air it stays in a gel form and remains on the carpet fibers for a period of time or as long as you want it to um, and then we used a stiff brush to kind of help break the substance down um, when I started working with it it wasn't a furniture stain transfer it was uh, more of a, a, a dried residue from I, I don't even know what it was. It was it was pretty flaky, but it was really odd that it was in a square like it was. So um, we broke it down. We let it sit in there for a little bit, and then um, finally I applied some heat, and that just helped to accelerate the hell gel and break stuff down. It looks really good right now. But like I said, what I'm going to do, I'm going to apply, apply a little bit of our uh, red one just to kind of help with any discoloration that that may have caused and then there's one more little red spot in the other room and then it looks like we've got some paint that we'll deal with in a little bit as well and we have a real simple small um, red spot right there and I'm just gonna let this thing run so we can demonstrate what we how easy this actually is I did pre-treat it with our, our red one so that process was already done so I'm just gonna take our heat Put it on there, count, give it about a, a, a 15 second count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'd say that that's probably good enough. And let's go ahead and pull that off. And it's almost whoops almost completely gone so I'm going to put it back on there for a little bit more time then it should be completely gone now I'm not sure if that will come out if that's paint or what that is we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and try it anyways to see what what that those little spots do so I'm going to put the phone down grab our one red one treat it and see what happens so we put a little bit down on that red spot and what we're going to do is I'm going to do a switcheroo so I'll put that there for the time being and look back over here at that little red dot and it's just barely barely there we'll, we'll treat it one more time and then we'll put the steam back on it for another 15 seconds or so and see what happens Okay, we're going to do a switcheroo now. We're going to pull the steam off here. Find that little red dot, which is right there. And looking back at this spot, you can see that mm, the stain one didn't, red one didn't do anything. So, I'm going to go grab our hell gel and see if that will do anything. While well, this is steaming, and then that should be gone. Okay, we're steam, steam, steaming away. Let's go ahead and check that little spot. And lo and behold, it's completely gone. I don't see it now. Um, we went ahead and put our hell gel on that. Let it sit for a little bit. And as you can see, we can agitate it a little bit. 
using a coarse brush here. And then what I'm going to do, um, hopefully that will break down whatever that is. I don't know if it's makeup or, or whatnot. Go ahead and put a little bit of more red one on it and then uh, give it another steam and see what happens. And that red stuff we were working on is completely out of there. Nowhere to be found. Hell gel, red one. We got it right out. Okay, that's where that nasty red stuff was. It's out for the most part. You can't see it. Um, there was a little green and then there, there was some stuff over here. So what, what I have found out by doing some exploratory work is that you can use your hell gel to break use a, uh, a gel substance solvent of some sort to break hard candies and hard unknown substances up and then you can steam a lot of it out you know just to kind of clean it up a bit but a lot of times it, there's like a coloring a dye coloring or something left behind by whatever the product was so like for instance over here we had like a green candy or something that I just went ahead and tested to see if this method would work. So I broke it up with the hell gel, steamed, you know, used some heat transfer to, to blot up a lot of it. And then I used a 50-50 in this bottle. is 50-50 vinegar and water, which is an excellent cleaner. But I haven't really tried it, so with discoloration, I used it both on the green and on whatever this red stuff was after using the hell gel um, and then just kind of agitated it with the brush a bit and it seemed to break that coloring down lickety split without a problem um, applying the heat a little bit may it help it a little I don't know I didn't notice it helping too much but just adding that that vinegar water down there and um, allowing the the fibers to absorb it so it just spill a little bit down on there and get it wet and then use that uh, terry cloth towel um, brush you want to be careful on soft fibers such as uh, cotton and natural fibers like wool you'd probably be ripping them and shredding them apart so you want to be careful here we're absolutely fine because we're not really dealing with much of any piling um, I might try a little bit explore on whatever this discoloration is the orange down there um, I'll go ahead and try the same method. I'll try a little bit of hell gel, give it a little heat, and then give it, you know, a little bit of agitation with some water vinegar mix and see what kind of results we can get from that. And the orange is 100% gone from the carpeting, whatever it was. So these carpeting in this room have been completely restored. Now we'll move into the next room and see if there's anything over there. And coming into this area, about the only thing that looks like it might need a little bit of help is this spot right here, which it could be rust, it could be grease, I'm not really sure. It sort of looks like where a couch may have been sitting here, and that could be grease or rust. So, before breaking out the rust cleaner, because it's out in the, the van right now, I'm just going to put some hell gel on there and see if it'll eat away at any of that stuff, that greasy, nasty stuff, and then that will be a clear indication as to what it is and what to do from there. So the hell gel seems to be chewing it up, so I don't think there's any need to be concerned with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use our uh, regular peroxide-based cleaning solution. It should clean that right up. Um, included with that peroxide-based cleaning solution is some high pH perox or high, high pH um, grease hog which has citrus in it so it'll pretty much be like a, a probably a weaker version of this but it will be more wet and get absorbed a lot more into the fibers and hopefully do a better job than what the the hell gel will do anyways um, of course this is probably about six times six to ten more times expensive than than the the grease hog product anyways so we're going to go ahead, complete our pre-vacuum, and then get right on to our uh, pre-treatment and agitation. 
All right, with the uh, completion of a complete dry debris removal with a vacuum, we were able to probably remove three to five pounds of debris. It filled up an entire Kirby bag, so we got all the debris out. We, we uh, were aiming to get out, and the carpets look a lot lighter already, but we still haven't performed our soil suspension. What this soil suspension is, it's a very high-grade... Uh, carpet pre-spray that we put down on the carpets and what it does and then once we agitate it with our CRB machine there you can see it's a uh, there's a couple of counter rotating brushes on there so it's actually grooming that solution into your carpeting it's not rotary cleaning where you're smashing and crushing your carpet fibers and all that but this is grooming it in and what it is, the soil suspension does is it breaks dirt, grease, residues, and things from your carpet fibers that did not get released with a, a vacuum. And it breaks it up, it releases it. And technically, you could just leave it at that point. And um, when it's dry, you can just vacuum it up with a vacuum cleaner. And your carpets is just as good as, or actually more thoroughly clean than... Um, than a hot water extraction, steam cleaning. Um, I've seen some sites looking over some information the other night, last night, and they were making claims that hot water extraction, steam cleaning, uh, cleans 92% of the debris in the carpet, which is a bold, flat out lie because uh, you take any uh, carpet certification courses and you learn that roughly 40 to 65 percent of the water used to clean your carpets actually remains in the carpets which means that they're a lot less than 92 percent clean so um with that said i don't really have a dog in the fight because i perform both the uh the hot water extraction and the very low moisture cleaning so um I prefer to come at it as a hybrid approach and actually combine um, VLM with HWE. VLM being very low moisture and HWE being hot water extraction. Those are your two main sources or methods for carpet cleaning. Um, yes, steam cleaning is hot water extraction. Um, people try to claim that they're different, but they're not. So. Hey, we're going to go from there, give things a good soil suspension, and see what needs to be done after that. So many times, the soil uh, suspension process that we use when we're using our mechanical um, agitation with the CRB going through is so drastic that uh, the customer thinks that we've already cleaned their carpet, which we haven't. All we did was pre-agitate. But... Uh, you can see a lot of soil suspension has occurred and we got a lot of hair, I mean tons of animal hair out of the carpeting with our CRV which that's its purpose. It pulls out all that hair and that hair causes the carpets to smell, um, causes odor, not only that it causes the carpets to become kind of dingy looking, that's why they look brighter now and it's not necessarily that you can see the matted hair in there but the carpets look more matted like right now the piling looks like it's up more it looks like it's there's more depth to it and that's because we pulled out in immense amounts of debris from the carpets um full kirby bag plus uh hey we loaded this tray up with debris as well i don't know if you can see it in the light everything from like little bits and pieces of wood and maybe kitty litter tons of hair this is just the matted nest that gets in the carpet I mean, there's a lot a lot here um yeah anyways so there you have it we're then we're gonna go back through got the truck fired up and we're gonna seam clean everything just to i call it the icing on the cake it kind of just pulls the layer off Mainly, we only really need it here because there's some dirt that's down pretty deep here that I think that we need to pull out. As you can see, the greasy nass that was here is completely obliterated. And I think 
we're going to be looking pretty darn good. Some of the uh, debris, <clears throat> excuse me, some of the stuff that's in the, this polyester, I have absolutely no idea what it is or how to get it out. Um, I went over and over and over and gave it this all we got. I super beefed up our, uh, our cleaning rinse, pre-spray. Um, rinse and rinse and rinse that, that traffic area, our probably a foot area couch here and feet there I mean it was completely black when we came in and this looks um, I'd say 90% better um, personally I wish I could have would be able to do better than that but this is the best that we could possibly do um, gave it a full everything you saw the amount of debris that came out of the carpeting we had a full bag of a uh, curvy bag of debris that came out on top of that we had a full um, reservoir tray off our CRB that was filled up um, those are gallon trays so the, um, one of those trays can hold a lot of debris and I would say that that tray is probably three quarters of the way filled up at least so it pulled all kinds of hair and stuff out of the carpeting so they are much cleaner they're sanitized and neutralized they're deodorized it smells much better in here. It just looks ugly because the uh, polyester carpeting kind of took a hit in here. But anyways, Jeffrey Howells Carpet Cleaning. Do restoration cleaning. You got questions on any carpets? Give me a call directly. 503-939-0534. Until next time, have an awesome day. Keep it safe and keep it real.